This is the most popular watch on Amazon right now. It's not a Rolex, not a Casio, not even a moon swatch. No, this watch is a... Biden? Wait, what? Surprisingly, I'm not even joking. While it has nothing to do with the US president, when I typed in men's watch on Amazon, this was the first unsponsored result, beating out many more renowned brands with over 15,000 customer ratings to boot. Now I'd show you all this, but Amazon threatened to boot us from their affiliate program if we showed any screenshots of their site. And it's why loads of our old videos now feature blurred out sections. For now, please enjoy my creative reimagining of their site. The only Amazon product shot I can safely show you is this one, or these from another retailer instead. You'll find out why later. According to Amazon UK, over 700 people have purchased this watch in the past month, far more than anything else on the page. But as you probably know, Amazon search results can be unreliable. So I double checked with the Chrome extension that let me sort by review count. While the Biden was a couple of rows down due to its newness, it still had a monthly sales figure that dwarfed the rest. Remarkably, this stainless steel watch cost me the same as most Casios, at just 26 great British pounds, and it's often available for under $30 in the US. Along with the high 4.3 out of 5 average review score, it left me wondering. Is everyone right? Is this one of those products where it's worth following the herd and buying this bizarrely named watch? Well, I have some experience with this brand. Hello? Hey, mate. Well, it's anyway, it? alright. Yeah, you know that Biden watch you have? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm reviewing it right now, and you're in the review video. <laughs> How am I in the video? Well, I'm recording the video right now, mate. You're starring in it. <laughs> Video of what? Yeah, I'm about to review your watch, mate. What are your thoughts on the watch? I mean, it looks nice, but it has broken. Has it? The chain, the, chain, the, the wrist, the, the bracelet. Broken. Oh, you're joking. Oh, dear. I was actually, actually going to take it to you to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've already seen one of these in the flesh before, but I had no clue how prevalent this watch brand was. Oddly, despite the huge sales numbers, Biden doesn't seem to have a proper website, instead relying on retail platforms including AliExpress, Wish, and DHgate instead. So yeah, you can also buy them from there as well. While browsing these Chinese sites, I noticed several other watches too. We'll get to those later. So they're clearly some sort of Chinese brand, but the rest is pretty much unknown. However, it seems most of their product shots are either computer-generated mock-ups or at least heavily edited, meaning it's pretty difficult to judge the quality. Take this one, for instance. The one I mentioned earlier, Biden doesn't own this image, nor does Amazon for that matter. No, Zenith does. Spot the difference? I mean, if they're lying about this, what are we yet to uncover? Anyway, how does this watch actually look in person? Well, here it is. Obviously, it's not nearly as good as the doctored stock images, but in all honesty, it could be worse. Unlike many other super low-cost watches, the watch dial has some level of complexity to it, with applied markers and engraved subdials. There's even a vibrant sunburst blue, which adds to the flashiness. My mate did say it looked pretty decent. Now, there are some glaringly obvious signs that this is an awful quality watch. We'll get to those in a moment as well. But one thing that genuinely surprised me was the weight. I mean, I've reviewed some super budget watches before, most of which felt like tinny, lightweight junk. This Biden, on the other hand, feels relatively hefty straight out of the box, or should I say sleeve. It's supposedly made of steel, unlike the brass or zinc alloy commonly used by competitors, which could explain it. But I sense there's slightly more to it than that. You see, when examining the case rear, I noticed two exposed metal strips with a much rougher finish than the rest of the case. It almost looks like there's a different material lying underneath. Still, if you handed this Biden to someone without any watch knowledge, they'd probably assume it was decent enough thanks to the weight alone. Our sponsor, Extra, on the other hand, doesn't need to rely on weight. Five years ago, they created the first smart wallet and they've been adding to their collection ever since. Their minimalist parliament wallet is designed to be as slim and sleek as possible, coming in at half the size of a conventional wallet despite holding up to 12 cards plus cash. The pocket-friendly profile still retains many of Exeter's flagship features. You're probably already familiar with their special trigger mechanism, which lets you access all of your cards at the click of a button. But did you know the housing also contains an RFID protection layer to cover you against stealthy criminals? What surprised me the most is that the cards don't come loose when you shake the wallet upside down, so you really get the best of both worlds. I opted for juniper green leather, 
but there are many other colours to pick from and there's never been a better time to pick one up. They're currently having a huge New Year sale and with my code you can get up to 55% discount plus a free cash clip for orders above $90. This offer is only running until January 24th, so use my code BENZWC while you still can. Use the link in the description and get up to 55% off Exeter's wallet. The highlight of this trashy ticker is the bracelet. It's fairly comfortable with reasonable finishing, a push button clasp with a safety catch, and three micro adjustment holes. Now it's far from the best on the market, but it matches the color scheme nicely and easily outdoes most others in this price bracket. While it seems to even use solid steel links, if you look from one end, you'll see that these are actually rolled links, cleverly disguised as solid ones with no exposed edges. Biden is far from the only brand to use this tactic. While not as well built as a truly solid link bracelet, this style should pluck fewer hairs than bracelets with more exposed construction, such as those fitted to the low end Casio watches. This relatively decent bracelet also contributes to the weightiness of the Biden. When fitted to alternative 20 millimeter bands, it suddenly feels a lot less impressive. Oh, and there's also the chance that it breaks, like my mate said earlier. Remarkably, unlike most other dirt cheap Chinese watches, I don't think this Biden chronograph is a cheap copy and paste of a luxury watch design. Now there are thousands of watch designs out there, so I could be wrong, I'm not Rain Man, but it's not a clone of a watch I've encountered, so that has to count for something. It's perhaps most like the Rolex Daytona, but with a dive style bezel, enlarged markers, and a more rudimentary handset. The logo, meanwhile, is hilarious. Both the name and typeface look even more Alibaba than a Spaghetti Scametti does. Luckily, that's one part of the watch that you can swap out. No, this isn't an advanced modular watch or anything like that. No, it's quite the opposite. Introducing the Megalith Chronograph, which I also purchased on Amazon for around 30 quid. Unlike most real versus fake videos, your eyes are not deceiving you. This Megalith it is the exact same watch, just with the logo and 12 marker switched out. What's the deal here then? Well, inside the branded pouch of the Biden is a piece of paper that explains everything. It details the name of the factory that makes these watches, Guangzhou Zhenhu Watch Company Limited, or something like that. According to some trading websites, Biden is their in-house brand, but they also offer OEM and ODM orders to buyers, meaning you can basically customize these existing somewhat generic watches and slap a logo on them, sell them under a different brand name and even have custom packaging. In addition to Megalith, the likes of Philly Q and Olevs appear to be doing the same thing. Some alternative color variants are even available on Alibaba for around a tenner each, probably far less for bulk orders. Still, that doesn't mean it's necessarily rubbish value. You have to consider that these watches are still incredibly low cost. I've also showcased plenty of solid Chinese branded watches on Ben's Watch Club before. So what are the giveaways that this is a cheap watch? And are they a deal breaker if you want to spend virtually nothing on one? I'll go through these in order of noticeability. First up is the jangly feel. While this chronograph is heavier than I expected, it still has the jangliness of a low-end watch due to the poor manufacturing tolerances. Second is the case finishing. There's simply no attempt at an integration between the brushed bracelet and the glossy case. To the naked eye, it looks more like chromed brass or plastic than steel due to the excessive reflectivity and the tone of the metal. Most low-cost watches opt for this less refined finishing style due to its reduced manufacturing cost. And um, while it's not a huge eyesore at a glance, it's left me even more suspicious about the stainless steel claim. You know what? We'll scratch this in a moment and see if they're lying. Now credit to Biden, or should I say the factory that makes them, they actually use a fully ratcheting 60 click bezel rather than a fixed one, which is a rarity at this price. I say fully ratcheting, but the amount of backplay is pure comedy to the extent that I would actually prefer a fixed one to at least increase the likelihood of good alignment. It's definitely the worst bezel I've ever come across and you can loosen it just by pushing it from the side. So I'm not sure how long this will last. To be fair though, you aren't gonna be using it for its intended purpose anyway, as the watch has got virtually no water resistance. It's only got a snap back rear, so despite some of the diver design cues, I'd steer well clear of the open ocean with this one, or even the shower for that matter. At least they're up front that the water resistance is low. There are a few other lesser factors too. The crown sits way out from its guards, the pushers, they feel like mush, and bizarrely, the loom pip appears to have been fitted after the protective film that covered the bezel during shipping. After peeling the film off, this small section just remained wedged under the loom pip. I've never seen this on a watch before, but I'm assuming in some way it must be cheaper to do it in that order. Either that or some private label customers choose not to have the loom pip at all, so it's just tacked on later like an optional extra. 
There are some redeeming qualities though. Unlike the cheapest watch on Amazon that I reviewed, which truly was dreadful, this one's surprisingly not a fake chronograph. The setup isn't your typical one, as you have a regular large seconds hand like most non-chronograph watches. Here the pushers instead operate the mini chrono hand on the lower center subdial. Overall the ticking is inconsistent, loud and it doesn't reset correctly, but it is a functional chronograph for the most part. As you might expect, it achieves this with a Chinese movement, specifically the Sunon PE90, sometimes referred to as the PE903. This is the cheapest movement I've ever seen with a retail price of under £2 per unit on AliExpress, far less when bought in bulk as well, with a stated accuracy of plus minus 30 seconds per month. What about the case material then? Is it actually stainless steel? Well, it's listed as steel on Amazon, in both the title and specs list, and it just feels substantial. Oddly though, the product description from the seller claims it has IP plating on it. IP plating, to my knowledge, usually refers to ion plating, a type of PVD finish similar to that on watches like the Core Excursion. It's used to change the color of a watch or to enhance its durability, but this watch looks nothing like any PVD coated watch that I've come across. It just looks like chrome's brass or something. Luckily, we recently tested a PVD coated watch, as well as the three predominant types of stainless steel used in wristwatches. So we know what performance to expect from this one. The three untreated steel cases saw light scratches with the level five pick and deeper grooves at level six, while the PVD watch did markedly better, only scratching above level seven. And this Biden? Well, if you bought this watch because it was cheap and steel, you've been scammed. It started scratching incredibly easily at just level four, kind of like the chrome plated brass Casio we tested, if not slightly worse, meaning it's likely made of that instead or some other low tier material. The rougher strips underneath perform virtually the same too. It's not made of stainless steel, it's certainly not made of PVD. Essentially, chrome plated watches succumb more quickly to corrosion than stainless steel, and they'll look shabbier after a shorter duration too, because it's a softer material. It is a Chinese brand, so perhaps the listing is some sort of mistranslation, or they're just lying to you, but these findings, they don't surprise me in the slightest, as competitors like Benyar, who are also on Amazon, have previously been caught falsely listing chrome's brass watches as stainless steel. Despite the bracelet being good and the dial seeming reasonable, in every other regard, this Biden, or oh, Megalith is akin to every other landfill-worthy timepiece that you'll find at the grocery store. The high purchase count and review scores could be a direct result of customers being misled about the case material as well, which sucks. So sorry if you've bought this and you've been had on. For my scoring, the linchpin really was that stainless steel construction. If this were a super affordable steel watch, it may have a unique place, but as is, I don't feel comfortable recommending an item that is near disposable, regardless of cost. It gets a style rating of 5.3 and a value rating of 6.0. And that's only because of the extreme low price, but that is me being generous. What would I recommend buying instead? Well, frankly, I'd recommend spending more on a better known brand. If you're stuck at this budget, I'd get either a plastic Casio or a spaghetti schemetti from our merch store. The former will probably last longer and the latter, well, at least you get some stupid stuff in the box. The schemetti also also performed better in our scratch test video, which you can check out here. There really were some upset results in that one, so don't miss it. 